welcome to another video. I am your Tactical Power Pro. If it's your first time checking my channel, welcome. I am an Air Force veteran, a former electrical power production technician, which is a fancy way of calling a general mechanic in the Air Force. So please go ahead and overcrank that like button and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. So let's waste no more time and let's go straight to today's video. Today we have the Westinghouse WH2200i XLT inverter. Damn, that's one long name. This one is an XLT series, which stands for Extreme Low Tone. This inverter starts and runs without issues, but once you put some load in it, it shuts down. Let's take a look. Here I'll be applying a resistive load to it to see how it reacts. And there you have it, the generator call quits. Okay, so let's resolve this issue with a simple basic tune-up. Let's start by removing the side cover. We have a lot of screws that we need to take out. We gotta take out the side grills. There's one screw hidden in here. Like I said, you gotta take out the other side grill. And uh, I got like six bolts in there, I mean six screws in there. And just pull this, the side cover out. Once the cover is out, we will have plenty of room to clean that carburetor. Now let's pull out our handy dandy yellow cup so we can drain the fuel out of that carburetor bowl. Make sure that your switch, which also controls your fuel valve, is in the off position. That way, no more fuel will reach your carburetor. If you notice, you can see the fuel still coming through the carburetor bolt, even though the switch is in the off position. If that is happening to you as well, that means that the fuel valve is not closing all the way when you put it in the off position. So fuel still coming through, reaching that carburetor. So it will get messy, but I have a quick solution that will help us work with the carburetor. So if we undo that bolt right now, fuel will start dripping out. So get a rag, put on the knee. I'll show you guys what it will look like. You see, I'm opening it and fuel start coming out. To avoid that, we're going to need some long nose vice grips and a rag. We're going to use those vice grips on that fuel line. That's the fuel line in between the on off switch, which controls your fuel valve, to the carburetor. Once we pinch that fuel line, fuel will stop and won't reach your carburetor. And that will let us work on the carburetor without making a mess. Now we're able to remove the carburetor bowl. You can see it's a little bit dirty. Uh, here you have your main jet. And if we look inside the carburetor, you can see the emulsion tube. This one, you cannot remove it. So we will have to spray it down and clean it with a carburetor brush from a carburetor brush kit. Let's remove the main jet first to see how it looks. We know that it's not clogged because the generator starts and runs without issue. 
But if your generator won't start, there's a 90% chance that you have a main jet that is clogged. So you can do all this process, clean the main jet, clean the carburetor while you're at it, and you'll fix your problem. But in this case, we're going to clean the emulsion tube. Spray it down, use a brush, let's hit it. So what's the emulsion tube though? In a carburetor, the emulsion tube is used to maintain the air fuel ratio at all speeds. It consists of a well with main metering jet at its bottom. The jet has holes on its sides and it is in communication with atmospheric air. Initially air is drawn through the holes into the well and fuel is emulsified. So when the throttle valve is open, the reduced throat pressure causes the emulsified fuel and mixes it with air and reduces richness of mixture. So as speed increases, the hole in the central tube are progressively uncovered, thus maintaining the air to fuel ratio. Let's not forget about the carburetor bowl. It's a little bit dirty. Spray some carburetor cleaner. Use your small wire brush and let it nice and clean. Let's remove the intake hose so we can spray down the rest of the carburetor. If your generator is surging, don't forget to take out that idle jet, that black piece back there, and give it a good clean. Once the carburetor is clean, let's put everything back in place and move on to the next step. I always recommend the use of motor treatment on your generator when you're doing a tune-up. It will keep your generator fuel system clean every time you run the unit. I prefer using the Seafoam uh, motor treatment. You can use your favorite brand. This video is not sponsored by Seafoam by any means. But hey Seafoam, hit me up. Maybe we can work something out. Let's check the air filter. It might need replacement. Yeah, most definitely need a replacement. That's out of new. Let's reinstall the intake tube and secure the carburetor and move on to the next step. Let's take a look at the spark arrestor, see if it's clogged.
I mean, it's dirty, but nothing too bad. It's not clogged. We can see through it. Just throw it back in. There. One thing I always recommend with the spark plug, and spark plugs are cheap. So every time you're doing a tune up, just replace it. The recommended gap for this inverter is 0.8 millimeter or 0.03 inches. The old spark plug was not gapped correctly. It was too small of a gap, which gives you too weak of a spark to complete the combustion process within the engine. So that leads to loss of power, which that was the issue we were having. Mixed fires, spark fouling, increased plug, plug wear, or poor gas consumption. If you wide the gap, too big on a uh, spark plug, then the spark plug won't fire correctly, causing misfires at high speeds. So always remember to gap your spark plug to the correct size. So now we'll turn the generator around and test how the generator is running with load before I put the side cover on. The generator is purring like a kitten. Now let's drop some load on. generator now is running at a 90% load without issues. Perfect. Now let's perform the same test but with the efficiency mode on. Let's see how the generator reacts. Perfect. In conclusion, the generator lacked power. It was shutting down every time we applied load to it. How we solved this issue? Well, the generator had a dirty emulsion tube or main nozzle, however you want to call it and the spark plug was not gapped correctly. Always make sure to keep up with maintenance, doing your tune-ups on the generator. Let me know down in the comments with what other issue I can help you with. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.